How's the convention going for you so far? All right. So I'm going ju- to jump right into this uh, because we've only got 45 minutes for each one of the breakout sessions, and I want to make sure I get all the, all the juicy details out for you. Um, I'm going to talk uh, almost exclusively about, about the new products, about our stress category, about our sleep category, and about our solutions for those categories, um, balance and rest. Um, and I'm going to show you a few videos. I want to give you a perspective for how we came to formulate these products, the, 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 the way we did and how they work and how they're unique and all that kind of stuff. But here's some statistics that I probably don't need to share with anybody about how bad the stress epidemic is. Right? I won't read through all these different percentages, but I want to give you, I want to frame that for you at least in that if you look at that first one, 77% of people regularly experience physical symptoms caused by stress. That's a bigger number, or larger population of people than are even affected by the overweight epidemic in North America, right? It's a lot of people that have enough stress, not just stress, enough stress where they experience some sort of a physical problem because of that, right? And there's a, and there's a long list of what, what those problems could be. We might get into it in a little bit. Um, the main reason that people are experiencing that chronic stress, though, is because of money. That's the one thing that is always there, worries about finances, is always there in the back of your mind, right? So when I talk about stress and chronic stress and exposure to stress that changes your body's biochemistry, it's not, you know, the earthquake that's coming. It's not the hurricane that just hit. It's not, a t- it's not that kind of, like, scary stress. It's that low-grade chronic stress that's always there, that's always in the back of our mind that we can't sort of escape from, right? That's the kind of stress that really weighs us down and leads to those physical symptoms. When we, when we shift gears and talk about the sleep problem, right? I have sleepless in Salt Lake, but it's sleepless everywhere. The, the American uh, Psychological uh, Association does a survey every couple of years about the state of stress in America. And they used to do it, I think they still do it city by city. They say, here's the stress level in Detroit, here's the stress level in New York City, here's the stress level in Austin, here's the stress level wherever you are. And the problem with that approach is that they're all kind of glomming together, right? All the stress levels are high no matter where you're measuring it. It's not like you can say, all right, I'm going to leave my city and move to some place where there's low stress. That stress follows us, right? So it's it's sort of all over the place. And that, that impacts on our sleep cycles. It impacts on us feeling like we don't have time to sleep. And so the end of the day comes and sleep gets sort of pushed away. It gets pushed out. So we're going to stay up a little bit later. We're going to get up a little bit earlier. If you look at sort of the average amount of sleep that people need, humans need, it's around eight hours. Some people a little more, some people a little less. But let's just say eight hours is the average. What we get, unfortunately, is about six hours, right? That's around what people are getting, six, six and a half or so. And that, you know, that might not sound like a big deal, you know, missing two hours of sleep every night. But biologically, biochemically, it's a huge deal. And there's been some very elegant studies done to show this. If you take somebody who sleeps eight hours a night and look at them hormonally and compare that person to somebody who sleeps six hours a night, even just after a couple of nights, University of Chicago Sleep Center has shown You take that eight person, you compare them to to the six person, that six person has about 50% overexposure to the stress hormone cortisol, right? That's bad because of what I showed you yesterday where cortisol is breaking down your brain and all your tissues in your body except your belly fat, which is growing, right? That's, That's bad enough. But you can also trace like a straight line, step by step by step. You miss those two hours of sleep, your cortisol goes up 50%, that interferes with insulin function, so your blood sugar fluctuates a lot more. Blood sugar fluctuation leads to weight gain, it leads to changes in appetite, it leads to prediabetes, it leads to us being more overweight. And it leads to a whole host of all those physical problems that we said before. So stress really is, or sleep really is, a, 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 a physical, psychological, physiological, biochemical stress on the body. And so we talk about them kind of separately, you know? Here, do this to control your stress and do this to improve your sleep. But they're so inextricably linked to each other, it's one of the reasons we really want to encourage people to use balance and rest in conjunction with each other. And just so I don't forget to say it, as I get into some of the data that I want to present to you, the way we're recommending these products be used is balance has two caps. AMPM. Take the AM capsule with your breakfast, 
the PM capsule with your dinner. So now your evening hours are going to have this nice relaxation to them. Your, your daytime hours are going to have this nice energy to them. And then about 30 to 60 minutes before you want to be asleep, you drink a can of rest. Okay, so that's a great sort of one-two punch to balance your stress levels and balance your stress physiology, those circadian rhythms, and then also help you get into those deeper stages of sleep. So one of the reasons we're really, really excited about this category is because we're, we're addressing a gigantic unmet need. If you look at consumer surveys, whether it's from Data Monitor, where this data is, it, is taken from, or, or any of the other uh, consumer survey companies, um, consumers really want these products. They want something that's, that's going to help them with daytime alertness and nighttime relaxation. They want things in these categories. So you can see 83% and 82%. But the disconnect there is that people aren't actively buying those products simply because they don't exist. So what they are being gravitated towards because they do exist is, you, you know, you, you go to the doctor and you, you have these stress-related problems and there isn't a stress-related solution, there's an antidepressant or there's an anti-anxiety. You go to the doctor and there's not this natural sleep-oriented solution, there's a sleep drug that knocks you out. And that's probably not the most appropriate approach for most people. And I'll explain why when I talk about sleep quality in just a minute. So that gap between the 80% or so and the 30% or so, that's a huge, li literally millions and millions of people that are looking for something, that want something that doesn't exist until now, until literally this convention when we're releasing both of these products as a, as a system to help control stress, and there they are. So I, I, I want to give you a perspective for how we in, in product development and innovation at Monavi try, tr try to approach this problem, right? We realize there's a huge problem of stress in the world. There's a huge problem of sleeplessness and restlessness in the world. That consumers want those products, but they don't exist. How do we build that? so that we give them something that they want that's going to work, that actually satisfies their needs. Part of it's market research, part of it is, is looking at the science, part of it's working with our, our scientific advisory board, part of it is looking at the traditional medicine to see, all right, what did they use 3,000 years ago in traditional Chinese medicine to treat stress? Well, nothing, because they didn't have a word for stress 3,000 years ago. What they had a word for is deficiency of qi, that's the life force in Chinese medicine. So we look at herbs that restore the qi, right? We can look back to Ayurvedic medicine, Indian medicine, and say, all right, what did they use 5,000 years ago to treat that problem of what they would call low prana? They also didn't have a word for, for overstress or chronic stress. So we can look at some of those herbs and see if they're going to be appropriate for our product. When we do that, when we look across, our, what, what, what possibly could we use from the natural world to treat this problem? It's not just us. It's not just me. It's not just my product development team. It's a, it's a, it literally is a worldwide network of scientists. And I want to introduce these people to you now. Um, our new SAB, which goes live today, um, it's a... It's a it's a global network of people with different kinds of scientific expertise. So my PhD is in nutritional biochemistry. So when I look at a problem like stress or weight or energy or any of the other things that we try to satisfy here at Monavi, I have a particular set of training that focuses me on that. So I'll look at it in, in, in one particular way, but someone who's a physician will look at it differently. Someone who's an ethnobotanist will look at it differently. Someone who's trained in pharmaceutics and how to deliver bioactives is gonna look at it differently. So we have not only a, a collection of different scientific mindsets, we also have geographical representation because Monavi now is, is not just a North American company anymore. We are a global company and we have to have scientific representation around the world. So you can see we've got representation in the US, in Japan, in Brazil. We'll be adding a, a member in the EU here in the next few days or weeks. Um, but we also have not only individual scientific expertise, but we have research and education partnerships now with the American Institute of Stress. It's going to help us bring this idea of, yes, there's something you can do about your stress levels out to a wider audience. We have a, a partnership with the International Society for Sport Nutrition that will work with us to help develop an active lifestyle platform that we think can synergize with what we're already doing with the Reveal platform. Um, and we have a partnership with the New York Botanical Garden where I was just last week, last week? Earlier this week, um, 
uh, visiting a show that they call Wild Medicine, all about medicinal plants. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, in just a little bit. So um, that is our new scientific advisory board. And you'll, you know, uh, on the Monavie website, you'll be able to read their bios and see some of their scientific expertise. Uh, and this will go live tomorrow. So that's one piece of it. We look at the tradition. Another piece of it is, is applying science to that tradition because there's lots of stuff that people used to use, you know, back in the witchcraft days that, that didn't work. Some of it did work, and that's what survived till today. We apply modern science, science to it to find out what works, what are the bioactives, how, you know, how, how can we combine this with, 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 with other ingredients. And then the third piece of that is the education. How can we take what we've learned from tradition and from science, and how can we convey that out to a wider audience? How can we help you guys make that sale and make that interesting to somebody to say that this is something that can help them in these particular ways? Some of it we do through media. Some of it we do through blogs. Some of it we do through the From the Lab episodes. Some of it we do through articles that we write in the magazines like the Monavie 365. All of these different ways that we can educate, and all of that's going to be coming to you on that new Touchpoint uh, app so that you can have access to that so somebody who wants to read it can read it. Somebody who wants to watch it can watch it. If they want to listen to it, they can do it podcast-wise. We're trying to do that from all of those different perspectives to help you guys out as much as we can. And here are, the, here are the products. So I want to delve into some of the details of how they work, why they work, what the ingredients are, what each one of those ingredients does. So let's talk about the AM capsule of the Balance product to begin with. It looks pretty simple. Three ingredients, Tongat Ali from Malaysia, Indian gooseberry, sometimes called amla from India, and pine bark from New Zealand. Um, every single one of these, you won't find the specific extract that we use anywhere in all of network marketing, all of consumer commerce. We're the only ones that have them. And that's significant because these are the best ones. These are the ones that work. These are the ones that we've already put through clinical trials before we put them into our formulation. Uh, and I'll, I, and I'll share, share some of that data with you uh, in just a little bit. But they work in different ways to help normalize that stress response that can become upset by chronic stress. So, you know, the, the idea is that you know, we can still live in that stressful world, but not be beaten down by it if we're able to maintain our normal stress response. And these ingredients do it in, 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 in a set of ways, and our PM ingredients do it in, a, in another set of ways. So let's talk about Tongat Ali for a second. Uh, this is something that's used in Malaysia, and it's used almost like an anti-aging remedy sometimes. It's used to take somebody who's feeling exhausted and beaten down and burned out and bring them back up to feeling vigorous and energetic and motivated again. And it does that by controlling cortisol in one particular way, but also by normalizing testosterone levels. When we're under stress, our cortisol levels tend to go up and our testosterone levels tend to go down. And that disruption in cortisol testosterone balance leads us to feel tired, stressed, depressed, uh, burned out, basically. If we can restore that balance, we feel a lot better. So when people say that they take the AM capsule and they feel more energetic, it has nothing to do with stimulants. It has nothing to do with, with anything artificial. It's about getting your body to get back into that normal circadian rhythm. Uh, I'll show you some data on that in just a second. Indian gooseberry and pine bark are in there to help accentuate that effect to help with not only the, the, the neurons in the brain where pine bark works, because that's where we perceive our stress, but also with blood flow characteristics so that we can deliver these ingredients, these bioactives, where we need them in the time that we need them. So that's the part of the tradition. We look to Malaysian medicine. We look to Ayurvedic medicine or Indian medicine. We look to uh, Polynesian medicine, which is that, 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 that part of the world where, where New Zealand is, and we find those things. But now we need to make sure we get good versions of those, right? So we have a very good version of pine bark. We have a very good version of, of amla or Indian gooseberry. We have the best version of all of those, including Tongat Ali. Uh, I want you to do something when you get home, or you can even do it here. Google Tongat Ali and see some of the garbage that you get. Right? You'll get all kinds of things from it's an herbal Viagra to it's a, it's a bodybuilding supplement that's going to make your muscles larger to it's a testosterone booster 
doesn't do any of those kinds of things. What it's very effective at, if you get the right kind of extract, is effective in taking a low testosterone and helping bring it back up to a normal level. That's a very important effect. It's important for men, it's very important for women who have a low level of testosterone to begin with. When women are under stress and their, their normal level of testosterone drops, they feel it. They feel it dramatically. Their motivation goes down, their energy goes down, their mood goes down, their, they, they ju their, their weight goes up. It, j it is very, very dramatic when a female's testosterone drops and stress can cause it to happen very quickly. Tongata Lee can be a very good way, if you get the right extract, to, to maintain those normal levels. So how do you get the right extract? Well, first of all, you work with the Malaysian government and their Forest Research Institute of Malaysia to take what, they, what they've described as a national treasure and get the, the, the right bioactivity, right? So you can take that root and you can extract it all kinds of different ways, but you have to extract it one way to get the right bioactivity. And how do we know that? We know that because of this patent that's held jointly by the Malaysian government and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They discovered what the bioactive is and they discovered a process to make sure that they have a consistent bioactivity every single time. That's exactly what we're using in our Monavi balance, right? So you get that consistent activity, that consistent benefit every single time you take it. We also wanted to make sure that we were using a version that is sustainably harvested, right? So that's why we chose this one, not only because it's the most active one, that has the best data behind it, that has the best purity behind it, but that we can have an access to it, just like what we do with acai. We make sure that the acai we're bringing from Brazil is done in a sustainable way, so we can continue doing it forever. Same exact thing with, with, uh, with Tongata Lee roots, which grow on a palm tree. We take the roots instead of the berries, grow on a palm tree that looks a lot like an acai palm. So there's a lot of medicinal benefits out there that we can, that we can get, get health effects from if we do it the right way. So how do we take that tradition and apply science to it? Um, you'll have access to all of these slides by Monday or Tuesday, I would say, um, on the Monavi website. So you don't have to squint and try to take a picture of this and write down the notes. You'll have a copy of it right in front of you. This is a paper that came out just about a month ago, done on our Tongeta Lee, showing a couple of things. I don't have a pointer here, um, but if you, look at the, if you look at the slide on the, on the upper left-hand side, this is showing salivary cortisol levels, stress hormone levels. And if you look at just the, just the bar that is the, is the sort of stripe, si sideways stripes, that's showing Tongata Lee uh, intake, supplementation, after four weeks. Significant reduction in cortisol, significant improvement in testosterone in the right-hand upper slide. So that cortisol-testosterone balance is coming back into a normal range. In this study, we actually recruited people who were moderately stressed to begin with. So they had high cortisol, low testosterone. They were out of balance and not feeling great. We restored their balance biochemically, and the result of that is that they feel better. That bottom set of slides are mood state parameters. So there was a significant change, improvement in tension, anger, which is kind of like an irritability measurement, and confusion, which is a measurement of brain fog. So their brains were coming back, their tension was going down, their irritability was on more of an even keel. Because we were able to rebalance that biochemistry that had been upset by chronic stress. And you can see the conclusion down here, this ancient remedy may be an effective approach to shielding the body from the detrimental effects of modern chronic stress, which may include general day-to-day -day stress as well as the stress of dieting, sleep deprivation, and exercise training. Okay, lots of sources of stress out here that this can help sort of shield us from. Okay, so tradition, science, and then how do we push that out to the world to get people to understand there's something they can do about these stress levels that they think that is just a normal part of life. And it is a normal part of life, but it's not inescapable. It's not something that we have to, we have to just accept, right? We can actually do something with our bodies to help us withstand that. And we do that through um, this. This is a, a, a clip from Dr. Oz where the, 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 the topic is you're stressed out, you're exhausted, which is another way of describing burnout. How can we get people out of that burnout state back to a state of high vigor and motivation and feeling good? And one of those, those solutions is Tonga Dele.
That's why the second reason is you're exhausted. We tested your blood to look for more clues. Let's join Dr. Sean Talbot. He's an exhaustion specialist and author of The Secret of Vigor. So I've talked to him a little bit about what you look for in blood tests to explain exhaustion. So many women are just sitting back thinking it must be something invisible and impossible to fix. Right. What concrete recommendations can we make? Yeah, so we can look at a lot of things in blood when, when women are exhausted to find out what the cause might be. We can look at vitamins and minerals. We can look at blood sugar, glucose. Mm -hmm. We can look at stress hormones like cortisol. And a lot of times when, when stress is high and cortisol goes up, another hormone, testosterone, will go down. And sometimes that can be something that leads to exhaustion. Right. You all have heard about cortisol and testosterone, right? You all nod your heads knowingly. All right, so we're going to talk very concretely about this because the second secret reason, and it's showed up in some of your blood tests, that you're exhausted is low testosterone. They may think it's just a problem for men. This is not just a problem for men. It's a problem for everybody because testosterone levels also drive not just your libido, which is you know, important also, but just the desire to just go and have full speed in life. So where's Michelle? Hey, come on, Michelle. Come on. Thanks for joining us. All right. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Talk to me about how exhaustion affects your life. I'm tired when I wake up. I'm tired when I go to bed. Um, I have long days. Mm -hmm. And when I get home, I'm exhausted. I have a family. It's hard to juggle. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm just tired all the time. Okay. So we've got your blood work. Okay. okay. Now, I just want to warn you that the normal testosterone level mm -hmm. is somewhere between 8 and 48. Okay. okay. You would like to be sort of in the middle of that range, ideally, and you're a younger woman, maybe even in the higher part of that range. Remember, 8 to 48 is the goal. Okay. Yours was 7. Wow. It's off the, off the, the cliff. It, it is. fell off. Dr. Talbot, explain why that's so important and why would that yeah. cause you to feel not just exhausted, but maybe burned out too. Right. So, so testosterone at a seven, that is, that's a classic sign of, of, of overall exhaustion. Okay. And some of the things that we can do to bring your testosterone back up into a normal range okay. are to, 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 eat, to eat healthy, like, like what you heard from Heidi, mm -hmm. um, exercise, when we have people exercise to get their testosterone mm -hmm. back up. Uh, we can also look at dietary supplements like Tonga Ali. This is a really effective way. Sometimes it's called Malaysian ginseng. It's a root okay. extract from Malaysia. Asia, that can bring a low testosterone back up into a normal range and help you have that motivation to, to be active again. To be active again. Okay. Makes sense? Makes sense. You know, there's one other thing we found with you, know, and the things that Dr. Talbot mentioned will work for this as well, mm -hmm. but it's something we see in about 80 million Americans. You and nine other women here, 10 other 24, tested for pre diabetes. Mm -hmm. So the things that Dr. Talbot mentioned will fix a lot of these things at once if you can get into them. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's one way that we can get this information out to people. You know, there'll be people who, you know, a blog resonates with them. There'll be people who a scientific study resonates with them. There'll be people who just want to watch it on a video or listen to it on a podcast. So we're trying to, we're trying to surround people with, with, with education. Let's talk about the PM supplement a little bit. So the AM supplement is for the AM, that, that daytime energy levels, that daytime... Uh, uh, you know, awakeness, if you will. The PM one isn't to take at dinner time to put you to sleep or just to relax you. Remember I talked about rebalancing your stress physiology. But we do have some ingredients in here that are relaxing on their own. So if you look at magnolia bark and philodendron, that combination is called relora. That combination relaxes you but does it in a way that we refer to as, as, um, as non-drowsy relaxation. Right? So it relaxes you so you can feel less tense, but it's not necessarily going to put you out. If you're ready to sleep, it's going to facilitate that, but it's not a sleep aid, so to speak. Ashwagandha from Tibet is something that's, that's in a category that we call adaptogens. It's something that doesn't just de-stress us. It does do that, but it also helps us adapt to the demands of stress. So it, hel it helps our, our stress physiology sort of roll with the punches, so to speak. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then pine bark again for the, for the, the, the neuronal benefits in the brain, which is perceiving that stress in the first place. So you can see we're, we're going China, Tibet, New Zealand. We're going around the world to find these ingredients from those traditional medicine systems. What does the science say? Well, the science, if you look at ashwagandha, it's like the flagship of the adaptogens. This slide is taken from the New York Botanical Garden website, and it's from their wild medicine show that I was just at on Tuesday. Um, so it, it really is one of, those, one of those herbs that can help you 
withstand or be more resilient in the face of stress. So that's why it's in there. We use a very specific ashwagandha extract that was studied in this research study. They refer to it as WSE by its Latin name, Withania somnifera extract. But we can just say ashwagandha, which is no easier to say, unfortunately. Um, but you can see the conclusion at the end of the study. This study provides evidence that the consumption of WSE or ashwagandha significantly reduces experiential and biochemical indicators of stress without adverse effects. So think back to that Tonga Ali study that I showed you. We rebalanced their cortisol testosterone ratio, the biochemical stress, and as a result of that, they felt better. Those people felt better. That's the experiential. The same exact thing is happening with ashwagandha, but through a different mechanism. So we're coming at this stress problem in a what we call a matrix effect. We're coming at it from several different perspectives at the same time, instead of, which contrasts to, the pharmaceutical approach, which is one synthetic chemical that goes bang. And sometimes that works in certain situations, and sometimes it causes a whole bunch of other effects in the body. This way, this traditional approach is much more, it's a subtler effect, but in most situations like stress and sleeplessness, it's a, it, it's a much more appropriate effect. So if you look at some of the data, this is another way of measuring how people are feeling. Stress scales and anxiety scales summed together. What you can see, look at the last bar in each one of these series, day zero, day 30, day 60. The, 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 the sort of stripes that are going across. That's the placebo group. No change over those 60 days. But no matter what dose of ashwagandha you use, you were getting a significant anti-anxiety effect, a significant anti-stress effect that was helping that person be more resilient in the face of stress. So we have some of that effect with Tonga Ali in the AM. We have some of that effect with ashwagandha in the PM. We have some of that effect with with Rolora, that combination of magnolia bark and philodendron also in the evening. And again, let me walk you through these slides. This is after four weeks, one month of supplementation with Rolora. This paper just came out uh, about six weeks ago. So both of these, these studies are really hot off the press. If you look at the, the first slide in the, in the upper left-hand corner, that's the red bar. You can see an 18% reduction in cortisol levels. Fantastic effect. You can see on the bottom set of, of graphs, people were feeling better in terms of overall parameters. Global mood state, a sort of a feeling of overall well-being, was significantly improved, 11%. On that particular parameter, a lower number is a better number, just the way it's measured. Overall stress was also down significantly, 11%. And then when you look at all of the different mood state parameters in the upper right hand, you can see that there was a significant benefit in tension was lower, depression was lower, anger or irritability was lower, fatigue was lower, confusion was lower, so that brain fog was alleviating, and then vigor, that, that idea of motivation and chi coming back in your body was significantly improved. So, you know, all of these different natural options for getting us to be resilient in the face of stress and feel better and withstand that better are, are, are all coming together. So, here's, a, here's a, a, another way that we can educate. This is also a Dr. Oz clip um, about about Rolora for reducing stress and tension. And the, and the angle on this show wasn't so much about stress on its own, but it was about the, the peripheral problems with stress. So you're stressed out, that's problem enough, but this show was about stress that leads to belly fat accumulation. And if we want to get rid of that belly fat, we need to do the diet and the exercise and all that kind of stuff, but con stress control is that third leg of the stool that's so important and uh, unfortunately neglected. So watch this one. Today, I'm unveiling my brand new flat belly plan created with the biggest experts in the belly blasting world. Now, we have talked about what you need to eat to beat belly fat. Now, I'm revealing how to cut the number one thing making your belly bulge, your stress. Latest research tells us that most diets will fail because they don't control your stress hormone cortisol. That's why I brought back Dr. Sean Talbot, who spent his entire career studying the connection between cortisol and belly fat. So, Stress, obviously, if you can get rid of it, anyone would, but it's hard to get rid of. So right. what other techniques do we have to cope with that stress better? Right, well, you know, it's, it's unrealistic for us to tell people to avoid stress. You know, it just surrounds us these days. And so what we really want to do is help people trick their bodies into having an appropriate stress response so their cortisol levels come down naturally and it can short-circuit that cycle that they find themselves in. Right, so Dr. Talbot has three solutions to lower your stress and cortisol levels throughout the day. So you can start losing that belly fat even faster. We're going to start in the morning. And Lita, you're joining us. What stresses you out in the morning? In the morning would be uh, 
getting myself and my daughter ready to get out of the house, mm -hmm. making breakfast, and just leaving in, a, in, 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 in an hour that gets me to work on time and her right. uh, to school. On time. Being late and dealing with a lot of issues at once is a big yes. issue for a lot of moms. It's a big, big issue for all of us. So, Dr. Talbot, you recommend lowering the morning cortisol with something called Relora. That's right. So in the morning, our cortisol level is the highest it's going to be all day long. And we want to get that down as quickly as possible. Because if we don't, that cortisol will always be around, telling us that we're hungry and telling us to store fat around the middle. So Relora is a combination of two different herbs, magnolia and philodendron. And it's been studied not only to just lower stress, but it lowers cortisol significantly. And that cuts stress eating and it cuts belly fat. So very, very effective for getting that cortisol down. So that's another angle that we take on controlling stress. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about rest. How many people tried it last night? Good? Uh, so I've, I've talked to a uh, hundred people in the hallway who said, oh my gosh, what's in that? How does that work? This is what's in it, and, and I'll tell you how it works. Fennel, lemon balm, chamomile. That's the Brazilian blend, right? That's the traditional brand, blend that grandmas have been giving to their little kids down there for as long as they've been Brazilian grandmas. Long, long time. They'll, they'll, they'll brew a tea out of it, take that tea, combine it with a little bit of sugar, sometimes a little bit of milk, give it to the kids, zoom, off they go to sleep, right? Doesn't knock them out again. These aren't, this isn't a, a, this isn't a sleep drug that's going to just knock you out and have you in bed for eight hours straight with, 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 with uh, you know, changes in your, in your sleep quality. This is helping you get into those deeper stages of sleep, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So we combine those with a long history of traditional use. We combine it with a little bit of science, right? We, 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 have, a, we have an ingredient in there called inositol, which is kind of between a carbohydrate and a B vitamin uh, that helps with the way that the brain sends signals, uh, uh, neuronal activation and things like that. It helps to calm the, the sort of nervous energy of the brain. And and we also use a little bit of sugar, right? Does that surprise anybody that you look at the side of the label and you see total carbohydrates 22, sugar 22 grams? Why in the world would we be giving sugar to somebody right before they go to bed? And the reason for this is that we're, we're doing it very, very strategically. A small amount of sugar like that can actually encourage the brain to take up tryptophan, an amino acid in the blood, at a higher rate. And that tryptophan can help be converted into serotonin to relax the brain naturally. So instead of knocking you out, we're actually trying to induce you into those deeper stages of sleep where we get that recuperation. If you took double that, if you drank a soda, a Sprite or something like that, that would be about 40 grams of sugar. And that would give you that too much. It would give you that, that sort of hyperness. That, that we all associate with sugar. But that low level used strategically like this really enhances the bioavailability and the delivery of those relaxing nutrients. So that's what's in the product. What happens when we apply science to that tradition? This is what we see. When we actually give the product to people and see what happens to their sleep quality over time, in this study, what we found was on nights you took rest versus nights that you did not take rest over the course of two weeks, take it this night, don't take it this night. Take it this night, don't take it this night. You alternate all the way for two weeks. The reason we did that design of a study is so, so we could prove to ourselves if or not there was an acute effect, meaning if I drink this can 30 to 60 minutes before I want to be asleep, is it going to work? Right? According to the grandmas, it works, but, you know, trust but verify. Trust but verify with Brazilian grandmas. We needed to see the data ourselves before we would believe it. So what did we find? We found in the red, on the days that you took, on the nights that you took rest, 30 to 60 minutes before bed, you fell asleep 24% faster. That's fantastic. You also slept 8% more Sadly, nobody in our study slept as much as they should, you know, which is, which is unfortunately the, the sort of normal situation these days, but at least they slept more than they did before, which is a triumph. They also had 7% better s deep sleep. There were more minutes spent in REM sleep, that rapid eye movement sleep. That's where you're dreaming. That's where you're getting the restorative benefits of sleep. The longer you can stay in there, the better, and rest is helping us get there. And then there are ways you can, you can quantify overall sleep quality with some equations about how long you slept, how many minutes in REM, all that kind of stuff. And sleep quality was improved 8%. So, I mean, all across the board, sleep longer, sleep uh, better, sl more minutes in REM, 
higher quality, I mean, all of that stuff is, that's exactly what we want. So I have to apologize to the Brazilian grandmothers for not believing them, but they were right, and now we can prove that with science. So how do we educate people about that? How do we get people to realize that sleep is that important, that you can't neglect it? It can't be that, I mean, it is the last part of the day, but it can't be the last thing you think about, right? It can't be that thing that loses out all the time because of the problems that come with that. Here's, uh, here's, here, here's one clip that gets into that a little bit. All need. Oftentimes we don't get enough of it, right? So how can you maximize your body's ability to get rested? Dr. Sean Talbot joins us in studio this morning to talk about some natural ways to get some more restful sleep. <laughs> We need you like your how I did help. That? I Dr. Do. Everyone needs more sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. John's trying the, the calming, soothing voice. To <laughs> Usually my wife just hits me on the head with a hammer and I go out. Whatever exactly. works, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Talbot, it's a problem for a lot of people, young, old, male, female. Yeah, it's a huge problem. You know, so of, of, the, of the three of us sitting here, it chances are two of us had a problem sleeping sometime this week. Yeah. And We're it's, both raising our hands. Yeah, okay. and it's teenagers, it's kids, it's adults, it's everybody has trouble sleeping these days. Okay, so I have never taken any sort of sleep aid myself yeah. because I get a little hesitant. What are right. some natural things that I can do? Right. Well, you know, if you, if you do reach for one of those sleep aids, the problem is it just completely knocks you out and it might interfere with your sleep cycle. So if you go for a natural approach, you know, get a, get a good day of exercise so that you're tired for bed or you wind down a little bit before you actually try to go to sleep. Those are all things that can help. But, you know, as a nutritionist, I like to study some of the things that can help us naturally relax and you know you've probably heard the story drink a drink a warm cup of milk before you go to bed right. that actually works because there's these little protein chains in the milk that help relax your brain so you can fall asleep quicker so warm milk okay yeah. all right I yeah, can so, try that yep so warm milk will work you know even the scent of a of an orange you know the the I'm going to stop it there so I can go to the next video and then, and then share some statistics with you at the end. But you get the idea, right? We're trying to get the body, again, to, to get into its natural rhythms that have become disrupted by stress. And the problem, if you don't do that, is that you get into this vicious cycle of having a stressful day, a bad night of sleep, a more stressful day, a worse night of sleep, a more stressful day, and it just compounds and compounds and compounds until something breaks. Right? You, you get one of those physical ailments of that compounded stress over time. And that's when you finally go, huh, I guess I better do something. Right? Hopefully we can get to people before, before that happens. So here's, a, here's another clip, a little bit shorter clip that I think is more to the point. This was on, um, I was in New York City earlier this week to visit the New York Botanical Garden and see their wild medicine exhibit, which is all about... Um, medicinal plants and how most of the medicines that have ever been discovered, about 40% of all the medicines on the market right now, have their origin in some sort of a plant, uh, a palm, a root, a, a leaf, something like that. Um, the, one of our scientific advisory board members, Michael Balick, curated that program. So it's 150,000 square feet of medicinal plants and it's just, I mean, it's mind-boggling to go in there and just go, wow, what could we find in these plants that could eventually be a, pr a product that solves a big problem for us here at Monavie? So um, since I was in New York, I was able to go on Fox News, Fox and Friends, and talk about stress and sleep. And here's that clip. Put on your PJs. Hold still. Okay, seriously. Seriously. This is, this is bad about time. Right now. I'm not kidding around. Mean it. Oh, we're not tired. Well, I am tired. <laughs> How many parents feel that way? Uh, uh, you're struggling to get your kids back on a sleep schedule for school. You're not alone. Here to help is wellness and nutrition expert, Dr. Sean Talbot. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning. Thanks for uh, having me. Let's start with uh, something that people are going to be like, are you kidding me? Sugar will help put my kids to bed? Right, exactly. You know, you say sugar and, you, and people automatically think, oh, it's going to make the kids hyper. I have to avoid that before bed. But actually, sugar, a little bit of sugar, the right amount, can, can it, it improve the brain's ability to take up an amino acid called tryptophan that can make us sleepy. So, you know, these all represent and about 20 to 25 grams of sugar, you know, if you ate these crackers or this cereal or these chocolate-covered pretzels, that would be enough to relax you and give you a good night's sleep. Wow, interesting. All right, now, pepperoni, not on the list. Why? Not on the list because it, it contains a different amino acid, tyrosine. So cheese and, and almonds and pepperoni contain this amino acid that stimulates the brain. So we want the tryptophan. We don't want the tyrosine. So eat the carbohydrate foods and avoid these, these protein foods. You can't foods. counteract, though, if you do dairy with that. You can, exactly. There's a 
there's a little peptide, a little protein chain in dairy. So milk or yogurt can help counteract that effect. And, you know, we've all heard the, you know, the story of a nice glass of warm milk helps you relax. Yeah. It's because of that protein in the milk. All right, so there is truth to that. Right. What are all these herbs now, sitting these over are, here? These are beautiful herbs. I was out at the New York Botanical Garden yesterday to get some of these samples. They've got, a, they've got a, uh, an exhibit going on right now called Wild Medicine that's mm -hmm. all about how we can use herbs to help treat ourselves. And so this is fennel. This is something that they use in Brazil to help relax children okay. before they go to bed. This is ashwagandha, an anti-stress herb. And lavender, just the smell of lavender, you can smell that. Mm -hmm. th that helps relax us. But you so can you also put these make, in tea. You can make all of these into a tea. And this is actually an example of a product that they have in Brazil, Monavi Rest, that grandmothers give to the children to help relax them. It's got all of these herbs plus a little bit of sugar. Put you right to sleep. All right. So feed your kids candy tonight. I guess the doctor told you it's all okay. <laughs> Great advice. Thanks so much. All right, thank you. More Fox and Friends. Three Don't minutes. feed your kids candy tonight because that misses the point of what we're trying to do with the product. So um, just, to, just to wrap up, right, it's a, it's, a, it's a big, big problem. We've developed these products to solve that problem, that, that really, that unmet need that people are asking for out here. And uh, how are we doing so far, right? This is what people are saying. I don't want to go through all of these different bullet points, but I want to focus you on two, which are just off the charts exciting. The first one, no, not the first one, the, the last two. 81% would likely purchase balance again. 86% would recommend to a friend or family member. When you do post-consumer surveys and you ask people, all right, you've tried this for a while, what would you do? Would you buy it again? Would you recommend it to somebody else? You're typically looking at about 30 to 35% as a good number. The fact that we're seeing over 80% of people saying, yeah, I liked that, I'd take it again, and I'd tell people about it, kaboom, that's out of the park. And then we'll be sharing these kinds of things with you in text, in videos, in audios, in all of those different educational uh, platforms that we have to let you know what people are experiencing, right? Of course people are going to say my stress is better. Of course they're going to say I'm sleeping better. But some of these other things that go way beyond that and are more about quality of life and helping people live that more meaningful life. You heard me say yesterday in the general session, that's how we think in product development. Yes, we can get a sleep effect, but how is that going to help somebody live a more meaningful life? Life. Yes, we can get less tension. How's that going to help with a more meaningful life? This, these kinds of responses say all of that to us. So thanks a lot for, for listening today, you guys. Really appreciate it. Hey, this is Dr. Sean Talbot. Don't forget to send in your questions so that we can answer them on future editions of From the Lab. Just send your emails to the address that you see at the bottom of the screen. Thanks.